So, um, <clears throat> I'm going to do another in the series on um, trimethylamine oxid oxide. This is on a, an editorial that uh, has to do with nature versus nurture. <clears throat> the editorial was, uh, was uh, actually printed in the New England Journal um, at the same time <clears throat> as the article by Tang and Associates, the uh, April 2013 article that was uh, a significant landmark. It was a landmark uh, regarding the whole issue around risk, uh, cardiovascular risk and TMAO. Now, <clears throat> Why is, why is that on a nature versus nurture? Well, he's not really arguing for nature or nurture. He's saying it's a dumb question. It's, um, it's naive and overly simplistic. Now, why is he saying that? I'll get to that in a minute. But first of all, there's, you know, uh, maybe I get too focused on context, but I stay well, very well focused on context. Uh, let me introduce a couple of things. Number one, myself. I'm, my name is Ford Brewer, F-O-R-D. Brewer, B-R-E-W-E-R. I'm a physician. Started off in the ER, uh, emergency department, and that gets you really focused on prevention. Uh, went to, uh, to get training in prevention and have actually uh, ended up running the program, and I've ended up training docs, uh, primary care docs in prevention for three decades since then. Um, <clears throat> intro on the channel. This is the uh, prevention uh, science channel. A lot of people would say, you know what, and I get a lot of this feedback. Well, quick, uh, get to the bottom line. Uh, just tell me what to do. Well, <clears throat> unfortunately right now there's a lot of things that you can, uh, like TMAO, egg yolks. I could tell you to eat them or I could tell you don't eat them. And I've got very good science on both sides to indicate that I'd be right. So, <clears throat> as, you, as you'll see in my channel, quite often I uh, frustrate people with giving you the facts, giving you what's known and what's not known, and uh, leaving it to you to form your own conclusions. You know, that's sort of like reality. You get the facts, but then you still don't know what to do. Uh, <clears throat> I think you'll get some interesting uh, information out of this, and again, enough information to uh, uh, to make some of your own decisions. So the last thing I wanted to introduce, again, is very briefly, a lot of people don't even uh, know what I'm talking about with TMAO, uh, lecithin, um, Think egg yolks. Uh, lecithin was discovered back in the uh, mid-1800s, uh, 1880 or so. Uh, and it, it was part of egg, egg yolk. And lecithin, which it was uh, named after, is uh, French for egg yolk. <clears throat> um, phosphatidylcholine is one of the major components of lecithin or egg yolk. You find it in, obviously, eggs, uh, cheese, and meat. Take it in the diet. Uh, bugs inside the diet will um, turn that into trimethylamine, uh, which is then oxidized by the liver to trimethylamine oxide. That has been associated with um, atherosclerosis, cardiovascular disease. Now, as I said, there's still a lot of debate around that. Uh, some people are saying you should not only take choline, you should supplement it. I've got a video that talked about some of that research uh, recently. Others would say, ah, no, there's significant cardiovascular risk. And this is the, um, again, like, as I mentioned, the uh, landmark article by Tang and Associates in April 2013, uh, the New England Journal of Medicine, where they're saying, look, intestinal microbial uh, metabolism of phosphatidylcholine and cardiovascular risk. So, <clears throat> just very briefly, I will also cover that, summarize that very quickly. This was a very interesting study design. They had patients come in uh, three times. The first time, they, each time they gave them a, a phosphatidylcholine challenge, uh, and then they measured it was uh, radioactively uh, identified uh, or tagged. And then they measured a 
the upcoming spike in trimethylamine oxide. So therefore indicating, yes, this phosphatidylcholine is being turned by the gut bacteria into TMA, which is then being turned into TMAO. Wait, you might say, how did they prove that the gut biome was doing that? So between the first and second visit, they gave them antibiotics. Did the second visit and saw a significant, a huge decrease. In fact, a basic absence of the spike in TMAO after the phosphatidylcholine challenge. So without the gut bacteria in the second visit, the phosphatidylcholine was not being turned into um, into TMA, trimethylamine. So there was nothing for the liver to oxidize. A few weeks later, they came back for the third visit, redid it, and you could see regrowth of the gut and uh, reintroduction of that TMAO uh, challenge. What was scary and interesting was they followed these people for three years after uh, separating them into the highest next to the highest, next, and then least TMO levels in their spike. The people, the quartile that had the highest also had the highest heart attack, stroke, and death rate over the next three years. They did some other things in terms of modeling and uh, showed that <clears throat> it didn't appear to be totally due to um, other cardiovascular risks such as um, Prediabetes, diabetes, age. Uh, one of the other things that they showed that they indicated, they really didn't talk about it because they didn't know it was significant at the time, was that there was a um, significant in a different term. There was significant interaction with uh, kidney disease. And again, we've seen that in uh, other more recent research, which I've covered in a different video. <clears throat> So back to the editorial. As uh, this editorial was in the same issue of the New England Journal, it was done by Joseph Loscalzo, and he said, look, this whole issue of uh, nature versus nurture is too simplistic. It was Galtonian. Uh, I'll read the sentence. The Galtonian distinction between the influence of genetics and the environment on phenotype is now widely recognized as overly simplistic, an overly simplistic dichotomy. Well, first of all, who's Gal who is Galton? Francis Galton was a eugenicist in 19 early 19th century England. He <clears throat> what he's talking about here is nature versus nurture. He was a major proponent of that whole argument. And what we're saying here is <clears throat> and I think this is the key message in this video. This whole message, this whole argument about nature versus nurture is dumb, it's overly simplistic in a couple of reasons. The first reason is this. Um, that assumes that there's no interaction between the genes and the environment. And the reality is there is interaction between genes and the environment. The second reason why uh, nature versus nurture alone, uh, as it stands, is a dumb question is, which genes are you talking about? And that's very appropriate for this whole issue of uh, TMAO. Um, <clears throat> he points out that there are more genes in our bugs than in us. In fact, 100 times more genes in the bugs that live on the bacteria, uh, viruses that live on our skin, um, and in orifices. And by far the most, uh, the biggest contribution. Uh, of our microbiome uh, in terms of genetics is our gut. So he goes on to talk about a couple of other things. There are other diseases where this has already been shown to be a big issue. Um, uh, our microbiome and the genetics associated with it. One of them is with uh, uh, periodontal disease. I've got several videos on that issue. Another one was with uh, rheumatoid arthritis. Rheumatoid arthritis, as I've mentioned several times, is as much of a risk for a heart attack and stroke as uh, diabetes. And um, inflammatory bowel disease. 
Now, what, what else does he cover in this? He, he, the rest of the, his article doesn't really cover a lot of major significance. He goes in and reviews the, uh, the Tang article, which we've already done. He does talk about, in the end, something that's uh, interesting. He talks about potential mechanisms for TMAO being associated with cardiovascular disease, one being um, oxidation reduction. Uh, TMAO is a major oxidizer, and it chews up uh, glutathione. Many of you have heard of glutathione as the mother of antioxidants. Um, <clears throat> another uh, potential mechanism has to do with its methyl uh, use. It's got a significant role in methyl metabolism. Uh, many of you also know that methyl metabolism um, and oxidation reduction uh, are both very much related. There was a third mechanism. I'll just check it out real quick, and then we'll wrap up. Um, <clears throat> oh, and TMAO itself. So <clears throat> those of you who've made it this far, thank you very much for your interest. Uh, no, I'm not going to tell you whether to eat, eat egg yolks or not. Do I eat them? Yes, I do. Thanks.